All right, so we are back with our first game. Sorry for the technical difficulties in the first one, but here we go. And we got a lot of problems on my end, so I'll try to fix them before this game actually gets live for them. But in any case, I think we're just about ready to introduce our two teams here. I think we're, I think we're good to do that. So here for uh, NSU, we've got Saturic playing the mid lane Alchemist. Going to be Conkle playing the support roaming Pudge. On our line, getting an early D ward is going to be Chance. We've got Sportslot playing the off lane Darkseer. And finally in the safe lane trying to farm up is Kitaru playing the OD. Now here for Hershey High School is going to be Kaming Mantis on the off lane Clockwork. We've got a mid lane Nyx Assassin. Played by Tander123, he's getting the lion coming in from behind, just staying a little bit of a hello there. And, uh, yep, that is happening. Um, Ogre Magi throwing out the Ignite on the mid lane, that's going to be Moose Track Cadet. And finally, at top, supporting the Morphling is going to be Retro Wraith, and the guy he's supporting is Rollstar49. So we're just going to be uh, hanging out a little bit here. A little bit of fun, hopefully. And, uh, well, Alchemist against Nyx Assassin, so they um, they were pretty much clearly baiting the Nyx Assassin pick or something like it with the OD, and they, they know how much of a, a matchup it is on the side of the uh, Nyx Assassin against an OD. So they just put the Alchemist in the lane. They know that the Nyx won't really be able to do anything against that situation. And... Yeah. And it's off! Hmm. Things are happening a little bit weird right now. There we go. Alright, cool. I think everything's gonna be good. Everything's gonna be alright. Get all that... I don't know what's it called. Dreadlocks and stuff. In any case... It's been a little bit of a weird thing. Oh my god, look at that courier. Here comes Force a lot. He's gonna use the surge to try to get it, and he will be able to get the courier. Not really sure what path it was using right there. We're only two minutes into the game, so there was no chance of having a flying courier, but Sports Slot picks it up. Pretty much offer it up on a silver platter to him, and he'll just eat that right up. I mean I'm a little bit hungry myself, but you know, if someone's gonna put a courier right in front of me, may as well take it. Alright. Uh oh, over at bottom. Looks like Clockwork is getting caught out by a Pudge. I don't think he's going to be able to get away from this one. Pulled back in. That's going to be the first blood taken by the last hit of the Lion. Yeah, just really working with the Pudge. Look at him getting the... <laughs> Conkle seems happy about that for some reason. Not really sure why. Well, in any case, they do get the first blood over at bottom. Clockwork already off to not so great of a start. And uh, if we take a look at his last hits, he's two for one uh, up against the OG that's leading. Really not the best start for him. And, and we talked about it a little bit earlier um, as part of the draft. This lineup for NSU, they are a little bit greedy, but you know, it, it really does not matter all that much. Um, because the, the dire side lineup, it's not really going to punish them that much. Like, maybe the Nyx Assassin can get a couple of pickoffs, but that really seems to be the only kind of upside here for Hershey. I mean, they may have a lot of chocolate, but... I mean, chocolate can make you feel good. I don't know if it can make you win games, though. Maybe they're a little bit connected, but... I think you do need some kind of draft for this, and... For this one, I think that the Greed is just going to work out for NSU. One thing that the Nyx Assassin can do against the Alchemist is he can just walk inside of the Ask Spray uh, with his Spike Carapace going, but it only takes one instance of damage, so he doesn't want to stand there too long. The high health regen is going to help him out quite a bit. It's not a terrible matchup for him, but he doesn't really stop the Alchemist from farming. He just maybe, I don't know, just kind of sits there for a while. It's at level 2 on the Ion Shells. Doing a bit of damage to these creep blades, pushing behind the tower. Morphling really doesn't want to take too much strength right now, so he's sitting at 400 health, pretty low. Don't really think that the Darkseer is going to be able to do too much against him right now, but if he gets caught up with, like, say, a vacuum and a, a couple of iron shells around him, it could be a pretty bad situation. Over on mid, there's a hook! Conko picks him up, gets a nice double stun with the Impale. 
And, well, it was the exact same double stun that he needed in order to get out of that one. <laughs> and he'll even get a deny off of that as well. So, definitely working his way out of a sticky situation. And the rotation by the Pudge turns out to be all for naught. But don't worry, because he is still at the, the mid lane, picking up his Tranquil Boots and a couple of wards, puts one down just to give him a little bit more vision. And... Yeah, he's doing a lot to help the Alchemist right now. Just This Alchemist is really not in any danger of going down at any point, especially with his ultimate being available. I mean, as long as he gets that off, he really has nothing to fear. Clockwork has avoided going down anymore. He does have a couple of ways to get out of some situations with the, the cogs. Push a couple heroes away. Stealing mana away from the push is actually pretty big at the earlier parts of the game. He can hurt a little bit for mana. And if you take a look at his mana pool right now, he's only got enough for two hooks. Luckily, that's the only spell he uses, but... You can see him trying to stack up in the jungle right now. Trying to be as efficient as possible. Create a couple of stacks for the Alchemist to come through with. Farm with the acid spray. And he's gonna get gone on a little bit here. Vendetta's gonna be there. The Turk, he hasn't used the ultimate just yet. He's... It's literally no damage. With those uh, raindrops that he's got, the Oracle doesn't do too much to him at all. And we do have a rotation over to the top lane with Tanda using the Vendetta. He really wants to make sure that he gets some kind of utility out of it. Oh. The Nyx Assassin's going to go over there and he's not going to find too much. Sportslot just uh, searches himself away. And he'll get out of that top lane. Pretty low on mana, may as well take a trip back to the fountain. And Pudge is here, he's invisible. They should know that he's here. Lion comes in from back side, there's going to be the Rot. They have a hook if they want it, but do they even need it? Yeah, that gets the Earth Spike, and Gaming Mantis is basically going nowhere. Astro in prison going to keep him there for a little bit longer. Pudge does not have enough for a hook, but they will be able to get him with that Rot, and Pudge will just come in with the last hit. Katara gets hit by two of those cogs, and well, the cogs do a little bit of work, but it's not nearly enough. Clockwork goes down for the second time this game. Alchemist continues to farm up on mid. I mean, basically, they go on to him a little bit. He'll use his ultimate. So at that point, there's basically no chance for the dire side, especially without the multicaps that they've got. Like, the Turk is just, like, running up. He doesn't even care. He's just, like, waving his cleavers all over the place, saying, look at me, I am an alchemist, and I have an ultimate. There's basically nothing you can do about this. And indeed, there is not. I hope that the audio is coming over. For some reason, I'm not able to hear so much. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh. Uh, there is audio there. I do see it coming across, so if it is still muted, make sure you let me know. Um, but I think it should be fine right now. Darks, you're putting a little bit of a uh, harass on the top lane, forcing a couple of heroes out. Clockwork finding out, or that's a Nyx Assassin looking at a lion inside the jungle. Clockwork helping out with the rocket Dyer's flare. But Nyx Assassin is just going to be very sneaky, bottling up, going around, not finding a rune just yet. But Alchemist is doing some work to this tier 1 tower, and he's actually nearly gotten it down. There's going to be rotation in from the Ochre and the Nyx, but they're a little bit too late. The damage has already been done, and oh. Well, missing a kill over on top. Like I said, he uses the vacuum, finds the iron shell kill. So a nice kill on the morphling early. And still the OD just farming up extremely well, only getting beaten out by the alchemist. And well, this OD has gone for an early veil. Interesting build up there. Gonna be doing a lot of damage with the Astro, which he's chosen the max first. So, he's got a lot of control for these fights and a ton of damage with the Veil of Discord. If these heroes aren't really wary of it, uh, it's going to be uh, very difficult for them to try to play through it. It does make him very tanky as well. Alchemist is continuing to farm up right now. 1500 gold on his side. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. 
And he's really got those blades going. Maybe the Nyx Assassin can try to... Oh, it doesn't matter. The Radiant still gets the tower. Nyx Assassin trying to do everything he can. Okay, there's going to be Spike Carapace done. He's out of the Vendetta right now. If the Turk had any levels into the concoction, the Nyx Assassin might have been in a little bit of trouble. But indeed, he does not. And the Nyx Assassin is fine. But uh, that's already two towers off the map, even if one of them was denied for the Dire. Uh, making the map control a little bit difficult for them. Rollstar forced to uh, waveform away from the Darkseer Iron Shells. He's just hanging out right now. Right now, Alchemist at the Soul Ring armlet. He's at 2,500 gold. Like, looking at his net worth right now, it's extremely high. And this is exactly what you don't want to give over to an Alchemist. And now, if you're Hershey, you basically got to figure out, well, this Alchemist has a, a tremendous start. He's going to be at his Radiance pretty soon. And we've done absolutely nothing to stop him right now. What do we need to do? So their answer is this. They want to go elsewhere on the map. Try to use the next Vendetta to try to pick up a kill or two. They see Katara trying to farm alone in bot, but... For some reason, he's just got that sixth sense that tells him that Nyx Assassin is coming over. No, I don't think it was a problem on your end. I think it was a problem on my end that the audio is muted. Like I said, my, my setup is a little bit wonky right now. And you probably won't hear this until about two minutes later. In any case. Sometimes I forget, like, the stream actually isn't on delay right now, but I'm watching on a delayed um, Dota TV stream, so... In any case, if there anything, if there's anything that wrong with it, that's wrong with it, just let me know, and I'll try to fix it as best as I can. Unless you want to change the caster, in which case I probably can't help you too much. And just look at that damage that's been done to the clockwork after the astral prison. You just put the veil on him, and he just gets. I mean, he's supposed to be a tankier hero, but he takes so much damage from it, man. Really, not a great time. Darkseer, farming, Alchemist, still farming. He's got 4,000 gold. And that's well on top of the net worth right now. Even going to get a bounty rune. And he should be at his... Like, he's so... He's so close to his Radiance already. And we're only 13 minutes in. This is, uh... Or 12 minutes in. He should get it by about 13 and a half, I'd say. <laughs> Look how big... That's a scary bug. Look at this next. He's huge! And that's what Bloodlust will do to you. And if only I could be that be that uh, big with Bloodlust. I'd be like the big man on campus and everything. Oh, do you just clear and creep waves so well with that Astro in prison? You can really tend to underestimate the damage that that does, especially with the Veil. Chance coming outside the Roche Pit. What does he see right now? Well, he could have seen an invisible Nyx, and Nyx is actually going to try to chase him a little bit. Do you think that they would be getting a little bit more active right now with the Clockwork Cook and the Nyx Vendetta just able to initiate onto a couple of heroes? But uh, they don't really have that right now. Or at least they're not using it. Yeah, maybe we see a little bit of that right now. Nyx Assassin getting a little bit of scouting done. Here's going to get the Impale. And uses the Spike Carapace right away. So now he's going to get turned into a fish. And now Katara's going to be the one hooked down underneath the tower. But again, he's got the Astro Prison. Unfortunately, hook off the mark from Conkle. So they don't get to go on that any further. That was a bit of a disorganized initiation from Hershey. They did some damage to the OD. But one, he's tanky. Two... It was under tower, and all he had to do was ask from prison. Gets the hook. Gaming Mantis, he's in a ton of trouble right now. Chance has the earth spike. Will be able to hit it on the Gaming Mantis, and he is stuck here. Oracle coming with the purge and the root, but it does not matter. Conklin just sits there, rots next to the clockwork, and that's going to be his third death of the game. Guy's not really doing well today at all. So that's a very difficult game for him, and maybe he's comfortable on the hero, and I mean... It's not really too much of a substitute for that, but still, uh, sometimes you just want to go for the hero that works better in the meta, and Clockwork really isn't the guy. Mid lane getting pushed in quite a bit by this Iron Shell Creep, and he's probably going to be able to finish off most of the Creep Wave here. Yeah. It's just really difficult for the Nyx and Oracle to do anything about that. Top taking some damage from the morphing and even he's having a difficult time of it only on a perseverance right now Radiant and he's oh my gosh basically the alchemist is tripling his net worth right now and Dyer's he's got his radiance tower. and 2000 gold in the bank should be a boost to travel very soon i think the dire are about to be hit with a bombshell 
And uh, they're not gonna like it too much at all. Vendetta on the mid lane looking at Sir Sports a lot. Gonna put an iron shell on himself. That's gonna be an early, easy carry face stun for the Nyx Assassin. All he has to do is pop it. Actually, the first takes the Iron Shell off the sports slot. Maybe you wanted to use the Spike Carapace before that. So the aggression stops on the mid lane, and Katara's been left alone here a little bit over at bottom. Unfortunately, Gaming Mantis a bit too far away. Now maybe they want to go back in. Lion has a finger available. He's also got the Earth Spike if he wants to try to throw it. Uh, it's going to be an Oracle TPing in. He might be met with a lot of oppression, but Radiant's just going to back away from this right now. Still waiting for the Alchemist to get involved in the game. He's still just very happy to farm up around the map. Pops the uh, Soul Ring, looking for the Iron Shell, or the Acid Spray, puts it down. He does a little bit of damage to the Morphling, and basically if an Alchemist is running up to you like that, you can't really farm as a morphing, and it's going to be really difficult to find that kind of space around the map. So it's just being taken away from the morph right now, and he's not going to like it too much at all. Hook hits on the gaming mantis. He's being taken out of the fight right now. Sports lock coming in, and there's going to be a vacuum on the new vacuum wall being put down. Gaming mantis stuck inside the cog for a little bit more. Can Kongskull get another hook? He's looking for it, but the Pinker is going to finish off the clockwork, and now they're going to get hooked. Hook onto the moose track to Jet. Trying to make his way out right now. Sports Lock comes forward. There's going to be an earthquake just sitting on the moose track. He's a little bit underneath the tower, and they know the Nyx Assassin could be near. In fact, they did know with that sentry word placed down. So they are ready for when he decides to come in. And maybe looking for a little bit of aggression on the tower. With the mechanism of sports slot, he'll be putting the push onto the bottom tier one. And they see the Oracle underneath the sentry word. They know that he was trying to do work. And they say, not this time, buddy. We're going to pull you right in and take the kill. Console hits the easy standing kill. And uh, well, he's going to get a couple more presents here in the bottom lane. Clockwork makes his way back. Hicks! the hook and he's put into the cogs but this is not where he wants to be put into the astral in prison they're taking care of all these cogs and immediately after the imprison he gets sent to his death by the OD another kill for USS and they are 7 -0. looking for the hand he hits the tender brought right back in console takes the kill once again sports lot also helping out there and we are 8 kills to 0 and did you know that there is a hero called an alchemist in this game Dyer's bottom tower. USS not even caring about Dyer's it right now. I guess the only attack. thing that Hershey, like the one bright spot for them is that they can have an alchemist on their team with the Morphling making illusions of him, but that's basically the strongest thing they can do right now because USS, they are they're really taking the mickey and the, the steam out of uh, Hershey's sails there. I guess you could say they're taking the steam out of their factories, which they uh, happened to move to Mexico in, uh, in the past couple of years. Tander123 again going for the Vendetta. This is just one of the Radiant's spots for Hershey that I don't think has been working attack. too well. In fact, they knew that he was there going for the dust, um, thinking that the Nyx Assassin was going for uh, maybe the not-so-sneaky kill, but he's going around the side right now. I wish that Hershey would have been using the Nyx Assassin Clockwork combo a little bit more. It would be a little bit more help for, for them, but once the Turk got Radiant's to the Radeon he's also attack. at the Yasha right now, so we'll be seeing a Mantis style from that him pretty soon. It's just not been going well for them. Hook, gonna miss from Conkle. A little bit of a more typical one from him, but you know, you miss every hook you don't throw. So definitely no problem with that one. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And the push goes onto the mid lane for USS. Putting some damage onto the tower. They have not given up a kill yet. We'll see who is going to be the first one to feed him. Maybe it's Crowbot as he just runs right in. The Impale is going to miss a Hook is going to pick out the Morphling. He's on full agility right now. And there's no way for him to get out of this one. Sports slot uses the mechanism. There's a vacuum on the three. Puts him into the wall. Moose track. There is absolutely no way he gets out of that finger. He's going to turn him inside out. Pick up the kill. Oh no, Sinter. Get back here, says Tonko. You do not want to take all that damage. And uh, they're also looking towards Gaming Mantis, who's inside those, those cogs. Needs a little bit more mana from the Pudge. He's got his soul ring up. He throws out the hook onto Gaming Mantis. Slowing him down with the rot, but Conkle's taking a lot of damage here. So he doesn't have the hook anymore. Who's going to be for the first kill? It could be Conkle. Vendetta finishes him off. Now it's 12 to 1 as the Pudge is the first one to die. Hopefully the Nexus Assassin also going to be get away. And a nice concoction uh, dodge from the Turk. Um, not really worrying about his... Uh, Concoction expiring there, so now it's time for them to defend their bottom tier 1 tower, they say. 
Interesting decision from them. Probably would have expected them to put some damage onto the tier 2, which is nearly down. And I guess they decide that only the OD is needed for that one, but they probably want a little bit of help there too. So I, I, I guess you could have predicted that the Pudge was going to be the first one to feed there, being a little bit too aggressive, but I just think this game is a little bit far gone from Hershey right now. They just let the Alchemist go unnoticed for too much of the game, and take a look at this, 20, over 20,000 net worth lead, and we're only 20 minutes into the game. I mean, there, granted there is an Alchemist, but at, at this point, it's really not looking great. There's going to be a vacuum on the two sports lot, taking the impale to the face, and I think this might be the second death, giving it over to the Morphling. So, some welcome gold for him. But, ah, uh, man, he's just sitting on full agility right now. He's only at 540 health. You saw how easy it was for USS, USS to work through the HP in that last fight. He might want to consider going for a little bit more strength in future days. At least he does have his Lincoln Sphere now. Has enough gold to pick up the ultimate orb from the shop. Oh, no! Conkle says, Lion, get back here. I need you, friend. And he's going to get the double impale. A little bit of all chat action here. I mean, I would probably laugh at that too if I were him. It's a pretty wonky hook there. Always gotta be able to predict where your team is going. And oh my god, they want him to miss all of these hooks. They say, Fudge, today is not your day. Spike Carapace gets used by Tandit 1, 2, 3, but oh, this tower is going to be denied by the Oracle. No one really going for it. There's a hook, picks up the clockwork, and this is not his day at all. Finger will finish him off, and Kale is also going to miss this feed back one to two. There's the wall as well. Hammer gonna get dropped down, and it's gonna stun up Kitaru. Tander one, two, three, managed to avoid the damage from the hammer, but he's still gonna be chased down a little bit. Vendetta is going to save him, but the dust is going to hit. Now he's trying to back away as fast as possible. Chance looking for the stun, but they're going to settle for just going on to the Ogre McGee. And they might try to push this in as well. Looking for the high ground, um, 21 minutes in the game, almost hits that hook on the Morphling. You miss every hook you don't throw, so you're just gonna throw it out. Have a little bit of fun there, and it's 14 Dyer's kills to two. Tower. I think our our first tier three tower is gonna get taken. Hook! Oh no! Pulling the Morphling back into this when the Lincoln Street gets popped. There's also gonna be the Aspen Prison. I think that's going to be a dead Morphling, and he gets out of it. Actually manages to Dyer's not Dyer's die. And oh, no, nope, that, that, that. Six gets two kills here. This might be Hershey High School getting back into it. Sportslot is in the middle of the Dire Side base. Sir, that is not for you. Get stunned out by the Ogre Magi, and I think the Dark Seer is going to be the next death. That's three down. And uh, USS getting a little bit greedy as they try to take the tier three. They don't even get the tower. It's the catapult doing most of the work there, but they give up three kills, and that's 4,100 going the way of Hershey. Rock it on. Man, this poor clockwork, he's really not feeling good at all. 3,000 net worth, and uh, man, he just wishes that he could finish up a blade mail soon. Really, really hurting for the guy. Morphling making more alchemist solutions. He's just gonna send them in through the lanes and, well, I think the Morphling's gonna be happy to have some kind of powerful ally on his side. The Turk currently sitting on, whoa, hello. Uh, maybe you wanna spend that gold, sir? Of course, picks up the Octarine Core. So he does indeed spend that gold, and still has 1600 to spare. Getting a little bit of a Scrooge there, a little bit of a Miser. But he's just going all over the map right now. I don't think he cares too much, I think he could get bursted down if in the right situation, but... The Dyer really aren't farming too well at all. Especially for the Morphling, going for the Ogre Club, maybe that builds into a... Maybe it builds into a Dragon Lance pretty soon? I feel like that's the most logical choice. Doesn't think that he'll get enough gold to go for the Dyer's shotgun. Oh, uh, Nyx Assassin looking possibly for a kill. Conkle doesn't have the detection, just an Aether Lens recipe, and well, it's gonna be the Ion Show looking for the hook, gets it onto the Oracle, and the dismember is going to be stopped. Ball Thomas also on the Oracle as soon as he comes out, but there's gonna be the back on the two. Rollstar and Moosecrack stuck in this one. Ward's like getting a little bit low, uses the Guardian Green, but he might be still going down. Hammer getting dropped, the Morphling is gone, and that Blade Mail doing a little bit of work to the OD. Oh, uh, we've also got Tander trying to back his way from the act. Radiance is going to finish him up. Here comes the con concoction. Moosecrack stuck there. Killed off. It's a 4 for 2 for now. And Retro Race, I don't know where you're going, son. That's going to be a finger. And the Earth Spikes finishing off the kill. A full five man team. The Turk looking for the tower, but it does have backdoor protection. They're going to need some creep for this one. Lion is here. Lion could do some damage, right? Come on, Lion. Gonna get in on this? 
Oh yeah, yeah, give me that town. Give me the taunt. There we go. Dyer's Play those drums and stuff. And Alchemist is still going for it. He's like, man, I want this tower. <laughs> I want it so bad. <laughs> Jesus, man. Well, with creeps pushing in, finally he is able to get it. Uh, a lot of characters are respawning right now. We'll see if he's managing to uh, pick off this, the racks. That's really what they want. He has a manta style if he needs it. He's also got the concoction, the Turk. Well, he really wants to get the tower. And the, or the racks. Well, he got the racks. There you go. They got what they came for. Maybe Katara gets caught out a little, but they do have vision of the Nyx Assassin. Hurricane pikes himself away. And uh, what's this that's happening here? What's coming on the courier? I'm gonna finish off the hurricane pike. I was meant to have this. Apparently you were, son. Hey, Apparently you were. Over in the top one, looks like we might have a rotation in from Tander. Getting a hook, hit by a little bit of the iron shell, but chance he might have been killed off right now. Oh, he's brought back into it. Zap, zap, goes the dagon, but we are going to have some alchemist support coming in here right now. He's going to come in through the side, looking for the concoction. Is the sun going to be there? Oh, no. There's going to be no sun at all from the Ogre Magic. Gets hit in the face with the concoction, and they want to push this in right now. Um, someone's getting surged in. It's the Alchemist. He was already moving pretty quickly. He has another concoction available. Uh, the Oracle is going to take off that Iron Shell, but he's got a lot of Alchemist Illusions chasing him down. Is he going to go down to this? He uses a Fates Edict on himself, so he is protected a little bit from the Radiance damage. And Nyx Assassin trying to go in from behind, behind the lines here. No detection. Oh, the hook just hits a creep. I'm not really sure what Constable was thinking there. But again, I mean, it doesn't hurt you to throw them out. Oh no, he loves those creeps. He loves those creeps so much. Wordslot gets a vacuum on the two. Oh my god, that's the third creep from Conkle. Gaming Man just gets the base edict on himself as well as the false promise. Then takes the best coming from the side. Nearly takes on the King Taro, and he does. <coughs> Conkle in the middle of the wall. Look for the hook, and he finds it. Moose track is definitely brought right back in this. Wordslot taken very low, and here comes the hook on the roll star trying to get away from the uh, rot. Tender nearly taken down. Radiance, Radiance, Radiance. It's not going to be enough. And Clockwork does get the hook on the Gaming Mantis. Wordslot really can't do anything about this, but he's going to get hooked outside the cogs. Alchemist chases him down. Maybe they want to calm down, pick up a tower. Chief of Conkle finds another one inside the base. Wants to take down the Oracle. Another hook will finish him off. The Turk just chasing around Tander right now. He doesn't care. Conkle down and out. That's a dagger to the face. Tander doing some real work with that item. But man, Tander cannot do anything against the Alchemist. And I, I think this game is soon to end. Chance, is he gonna die to this? Rocket Flare? Yeah, he is. Gem on the ground now. The Turk? Maybe he walks over there. I think he's gonna Alchemist up his butt pretty soon. They just call it GG though. That's gonna be game one going the way of USS. And the HSL group stage. Yeah, it was really just a greedy lineup that really wasn't stopped at all from NSU. They played their greedy lineup and do it pretty well. They didn't get caught out early at all, and they got the farm that they needed to turn it into some early advantages. So I'm going to go back to my plain, uh, silly um, pause screen. But thank you all for watching. It's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, to cast on Pitsy Lagoon, you can follow me on Twitter at Pitsy Lagoon as well as on twitch.tv slash Pitsy Lagoon. Also, follow this channel to keep up all on all of your high school Star League Dota 2 action. That's twitch.tv slash HS Star League 2. And this is going to be where all of your high school Star League action is for the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with game number two in just a few moments. Stay classy, guys, and as always, cheers.